Yeah, I'm Rob Adala, the other co-founder, back to back. This is theCUBE, siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv's production of theCUBE, our flagship telecast where we go out to the event. Um, that was a great conversation. I was really just, just cool. I could have, we could have probably hit on a few more things. Obviously well read. Uh, awesome. Um, yeah. Co-founder of Cloudera. Amr, you were, you did a good job teaming up with that co-founder, huh? Yeah. Not, yeah. not bad on the cube, huh? <laughs> He's not bad on the cube, isn't he? He, he reads the internet. Yeah. That's what we say. Yeah. <laughs> Anything is going on He's anywhere. He's a cube star, you know? And uh, technology, Jeff knows it. Yeah, we we uh, tell you, I'm smarter just by being in, in Cloudera all those years, and I actually uh, was following what he was saying. It's sad, I was, uh, it didn't dust my brain off. So, okay, so you're back. Um, so. We were talking earlier with Mike Olson about the relational database thing. So I'm yeah. going to kind of pick that up where we left off with you around, you know, he was really excited. He's like, you know, hey, we saw that relational database movement happen. He was part of that, yeah, yeah. that, that generation. And then, but things were happening, this, are kind of happening the same way, in a similar way, mm -hmm. um, still early. So I was trying to really peg with him, how early are we? Like, so, you know, as, as the curve, you know, this is 1400, it's not the Javits Center yet, maybe Hadoop World. You know, next year I'd be at the Javits Center, 35,000 yeah. Just people. don't go to Vegas. So we're, I'm trying to figure out where we are on that curve. Yeah. Are we you know, on the upward slope, you know, down here, not even hitting that? I think, I think, uh, I think we're moving up quicker than previous waves. Uh, and actually, if you, if you look, for example, Oracle, I think it took them 15, 20 years until they, they really became a mature company. Uh, VMware, which started about, uh, what, 12, 13 years ago, it took them about maybe eight years. Uh, to, to be a big company, a uh, mature company, and I'm hoping we're going to do it in five. So, yeah. a couple more years. Highly accelerated. Yes, but yeah, we see, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been surprised by the growth. I have been. I, I've been so told, warned that? about enterprise software and, and uh, that it takes long for adoption uh, to take place. But, but the I've consumerization trend is really changing yes. that. I mean, it seems to be that yeah, the enterprise is always last. Why the shorter cycle? I think the shorter cycle is coming from uh, uh, having the, 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 the right solution for the right problem at the right time. I think that's a big part of it. So luck definitely is a big part of this. Now in terms of how, why this is changing uh, compared to uh, um, um, uh, a couple of dec decades ago, why the adoption is changing uh, compared to a couple of decades ago, I, uh, I think that's coming just because of how quickly the technology itself, the underlying hardware, is evolving. So right now the fact that you can buy a single server and it has eight cores to 16 cores, has 12 hard disks, two terabytes each, is, is something that's just pushing the, 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 the limits of what you can do with the existing systems, and yeah. hence making it more likely for new systems to disrupt them. Yeah, we've been talking about a lot. It's, it's very easy for people to actually start a, a, a big data project, yes. for example. And, yes. and the hardest part is, okay, what, what do I really need? What problem do I need to solve? How am I going to how am I going to monetize it? Right, those yes. are the hard parts. It's yeah. not, the, not the underlying technology. Yes, yes, that's true. That's true. I, I mean, you say, eh, you're saying because I'm, because I'm seeing, seeing so both. Much I'm, I'm seeing both. I'm seeing both. Yeah. And like I'm seeing cases where you're right. There's some companies that's like, oh, this Hadoop thing is so cool. What problem can I solve with it? Mm -hmm. And I see other companies like I have this huge problem, and 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 they don't know that Hadoop exists. It's so and once they know, they just jump on it right away. Mm -hmm. It's like we know when you have a headache and you're searching for the medicine in aspirin. Wow, it yeah. works. I was talking to Jeff Heimerbacher before he came on stage, and, and I didn't even get to it because we were so on a nice riff there, right? A bunch of like a musicians playing the guitar together. But like, he, we talked about the IT and, and dynamics, and he said something that I thought's right on the money. And SAP is talking the same thing. It said they're going to the lines of business. Yes. Because IT is the gatekeeper. That's it's like selling mini computers to a mainframe. We're selling. Yes. Client server to a mini computer yeah. team. Yeah. There's not we're resistance. Seeing both. It's we're just seeing both as well. So, uh, more likely the the former one, meaning meaning that yes, line of business and departments they adopt the technology, and then IT comes in and they see there's already these five different departments having it, and they think, okay, now we need to formalize this across the organization. So what happens then? What are you seeing out there? Like when that happens. I mean, perhaps people get their hands on, hey, we got a problem to solve. Yeah. So that's what it comes down to. Well, I, Hadoop exists, and go get Hadoop. Oh, yeah. They plop it in there, and I, what does IT do? They, uh, no, no, so they pop it into their, in their own installation or yeah. on, the, on the cloud, and they show that this actually is working and solving the problem for yeah. them. And when that happens, it's a, very, it's a very easy adoption from their own, because they just go tell IT, we need this right now, because it's 
solving this problem and it's going to make, make us and this much more money. moving it right in, yes. no problem. So is, is that another yes. reason why the cycle's compressed? I mean, you know, you think client server, there was a lot of resistance from IT. And yes. Now it's more, much, so take same thing with mobile. I mean, mobile is flipped, yep. right? I mean, yep. so okay, bring it in, we got to deal with it. Yep. I would think the same thing. We have, we have a data problem, let's turn it into an opportunity. Yeah, okay, I'm so a, a, mindset. I'm a, yeah. Um, and it goes back to what I said earlier, the right solution for the right problem at the right time. Like when, they, when, when you have larger amounts of unstructured data, there isn't anything else out there. There. They can even touch what Hadoop can do. So Amr, I need to just change gears here in yeah, a yeah. minute. The gaming so, stuff? so we have, um, <laughs> we're, we're featured on Justin.tv right now on the front page, oh, wow. but the numbers aren't coming in because there's a competing stream of a recently released Modern Warfare 3 feature. Yes, yes. So um, I was looking forward so we have to, to compete with Modern Warfare 3, so can, you, can we talk about Modern Warfare 3 for a minute and share with the folks what you think of the current version if any, have you played it yet? So I, I, unfortunately, um, I, 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 I'm waiting to get back home. I don't have my Xbox with me here. He at just the lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> like, yeah. Boom! Modern Warfare yeah, yeah. Three, it's like a Christmas tree. So over here. You, you know, I love. I'm a big gamer. I'm a big video yeah. gamer. Uh, at Cloudera, we have uh, every Thursday at uh, 5:30 in the office. We we play Call of Duty version four, which is Modern Warfare One actually. And I challenge I challenge people out there to come challenge our team. Just Ping me on Twitter and we'll uh, we'll do a cloud okay, versus let's, let's reframe that. Best so team out there. Amar Abadallah's company. This is the geeks that invent the future. Jeff Hammerbacher at Facebook now at Cloudera. Amar leading the charge. These guys are at gamers. So all the young gamers out there, Amar saying they're going to challenge you at which version? Uh, but Modern Warfare One. Modern Warfare One. Yes. Um, how do they fire a wall in? Can you set up an external? We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure we'll, it out. Okay. We'll, yeah. Just so ping me on Twitter and, we, and we'll, we'll take carry it, it live. Actually, yeah. we can stream that. Yeah, actually. that'd be great. That you know? would be great. <laughs> yeah. So I'll tell you some of our best Hadoop committers and Hadoop uh, developers. Uh, picture the picture so, of Modern Warfare yeah. Three going. Now, on. Modern Warfare Three. Very excited about the game. I saw the the trailers for it. Looks the graphics look just amazing. Graphics are amazing. I love the series since the first one that came out, and I'm looking forward to getting back home to playing that game. Um, I can't play. My son won't let me play. I'm such a fumbler with the uh, new. With the, I'm a keyboard controller. I can't work the Xbox controller. Oh. I have a coordination problem at yeah, my yeah. age, and I'm just a klutz. And like, <laughs> like Dad, sorry, charity's over. <laughs> can I, can you, I play with my friends Give now? Give me the box back. <laughs> Uh, I'm around yeah, yeah. big game rather. But, but in terms of, I mean, I, I, something I wanted to bring up is, is how to link up gaming with big data and analysis and so on. So, uh, uh, like, I, I'm a big gamer, I love playing games, but at the same time, whenever I play games, I feel a little bit guilty because it's kind of like wasted time. So it's like, I mean, yeah, it's fun and I'm getting lots of enjoyment on it, it makes my life uh, much more cheerful. But still, how can we harness all of, this, all of these hours that gamers spend playing a game like uh, Modern Warfare 3? How can, we, how can we collect, instrument all of the data that's coming from that and coming up, for example, with something useful, with predictive well, I mean, models well, for soldiers? This, is exactly, a, this is exactly the kind of application that's mainstream, is gaming. Yeah, yeah. Um, Danny at uh, Riot Games is telling me, we saw him at Oracle Open World, he's up there for the Java One. He said that they don't really have a big data platform and their business is about understanding user behavior, wrap tons of data about user playing time, who they're playing with, yeah, yeah. Uh, they want to get into currency trading, um, you know. No, I, I, can't, I can't mention the names, but some of the biggest gaming companies out there are using Hadoop right now and, and depending on CDH for doing exactly that kind of thing. Creating a good and user experience. Today they're doing it for the purpose of enhancing the user experience and improving retention. Uh, so they do track everything, like every single bullet you fire, everything a baseball hit you get, everything uh, 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 home run you, you, you do in, 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 uh, in, in a football every type of game. consecutive headshot you get. Everything, <laughs> everything is being, yeah, headshot you get and so on. But, but as you said, they are using that information today to sell more products and, and, and retain their users. Now what I'm suggesting is that how can you harness that energy for the good as well? I mean, for making money, money is good and everything, but how can you harness that for doing something useful so that all of this entertainment time is also actually productive time as well. I think that'd be a holy grail in this, in this environment if we can yeah, achieve that. Yeah, it used to be that porn used to be the telegraph of the future of, of, uh, of uh, applications, but gaming really is. If you look at gaming, you know, you get the headset on, it's a collaborative environment. Oh, yeah. You got unified communications. Yeah, and you, you see have, our teenager kids, how, how many hours they spend on these things? You got play, it's a play <laughs> environment, it's very social, collaborative. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, some say, you know, we, what we're saying, what I'm saying is that that's the, that's the future work environment. With Skype evolving, <laughs> our multiplayer game's called Our Job, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so, um, I'm big on gaming, so all the gamers out there, uh, Amr uh, has challenged you. Yeah. Um, got a big data example. Um, what else are we seeing? So let's talk about the uh, the software. So you, we, one of the things you were talking about that I really liked, you were going down the list. So on Mike's slide, he had all the new features so around the core. 
Can you just go down the core and rattle off your version of what, what it means and what it is? So you start off with, um, say, HBase. We talked about that already. What are the other ones that are out there? So the projects that we have right the now? Projects that are around, those tools that are being built. Yeah, so the foundational, the foundational one, as we mentioned before, is HDFS for storage, MapReduce for processing. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the immediate layer above that is how to make MapReduce easier for the masses. So how can he, uh, not everybody knows how to learn MapReduce, Java. Yeah. Everybody knows SQL, right? So, so one of the most successful projects right now that has the highest attach rate, meaning people usually when they install Hadoop, install it as well, is Hive. So Hive takes uh, SQL, and so Jeff Hammerbacker, uh, my co-founder, when he was at Facebook, his team built the Hive system. Essentially, Hive takes SQL, so you don't have to learn a new language, you already know SQL, and then converts that into MapReduce for you. That not only expands the developer base for how many people can use Hadoop, but also makes it easier to integrate Hadoop uh, through ODBC and JDBC, integrated with BI tools like MicroStrategy and Tableau and Informatica, et cetera, et cetera. He mentioned so, R too, he mentioned R programming. R as well, language. yeah, R is one of our best uh, partnerships. We're very, very uh, happy with them. So that's, uh, that's one of the very key projects is Hive. A sister project to Hive is called Pig. Um, Pig Latin uh, is a language that uh, Yahoo invented that uh, you have to learn the language, but it's very, easy, it's very easy to learn compared to MapReduce. But once you learn it, you can, uh, you can specify very deep uh, data pipelines. Right? SQL is good for queries. It's not good for data pipelines because it becomes very convoluted, it becomes very hard for the, the human brain to understand it. So uh, Pig is much more natural to the human brain. It's more like Perl, very similar to Perl scripting kind of languages. So with Pig, you can write very, very long data pipelines. Again, very successful project, uh, doing very, very well. Uh, another key project is EdgeBase, like you said. So EdgeBase uh, allows you to do low latency, so you can do very, very quick lookups, and also allows you to do uh, transactions, so you can do up updates, inserts, and deletes. Uh, so one of the talks here at Hadoop World, which I recommend people watch uh, uh, w w when the videos come out, is the talk by Jonathan Gray uh, from Facebook, and he talked about how they use EdgeBase. Uh, jo Jonathan on here in the cube later. Yeah, so you should, should drill him on that. So they use EdgeBase now for many, many things within Facebook. They have a big team now committed to building uh, and improving EdgeBase uh, with us and with the community at large. And uh, they're using it for doing their online uh, messaging system, the live mail system in uh, Facebook is powered by EdgeBase right now. Uh, again, pro and eBay, the Cassini project, uh, they gave a keynote earlier today at the conference as well, is using EdgeBase as well. So EdgeBase is definitely one of the projects that's growing very, very quickly uh, right now uh, within the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, another key project uh, that Jeff alluded to earlier when he was on here is Flume. Uh, so Flume is very instrumental because you have this nice system Hadoop, but it's, Hadoop is useless unless you have data inside it. So how do you get the data inside Hadoop? So Flume essentially is this very nice framework for having these agents all over your infrastructure, inside mm -hmm. your web servers, inside your application servers, inside your mobile devices, your network equipment, that collects all of that data and then uh, reliably and, and materializes it inside Hadoop. So Flume does that. Uh, another good project is Uzi. There's so many of them, I don't know how, how long you want me to keep going here, but, no, but no, Uzi, no, is uh, Uzi is a workflow processing system. Uh, so Uzi allows you to define uh, a series of jobs, some of them in Pig, some of them in Hive, some of them in MapReduce. You can define a series of them and then link them to each other and say only start this job when these other job fin two jobs finish because I'm waiting for the input from them before I can kick off and so on. Uh, so Uzi is a very nice framework that will do, will do that, will manage the whole graph of jobs for you and retry things when they fail, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another good project is WIRR, W-H-I-R-R, -R, and WIRR allows you to very easily start a Hadoop cluster on top of Amazon EC2, on top of Rackspace. Uh, uh, it, it, it's more for kicking off it's for kicking off Hadoop instances or edge-based instances mm -hmm. on uh, any virtual infrastructure. Okay. Uh, uh, VMware vCloud, so that it supports all of the major um, uh, vCloud, sorry, all of the, mission, uh, all of the major virtualized infrastructure uh, systems out there, Eucalyptus as well and so on. Uh, so that's where, W-H-I-R-R. Uh, Avro uh, uh, is another key project. It's, what, it's uh, Duck Cutting's main kind of project right now. I don't know if Duck Cutting, Duck Cutting came on stage yet no, with you guys. So Avro, Avro is a project about how do we encode with our files the schema of these files, right? Because when you open up a text file and you don't know how to, what the columns mean and how to parse it, it becomes very hard to work with it. So Avro allows you to do that much more easily. It's also useful for doing RPC, what we call RPC, remote procedure calls mm -hmm. for having different services talk to each other. Avro is very useful for that as well. Uh, and the list go keeps going on and on. Scoop, 
Mahout, yeah, which we just added. Thanks for, for yeah. reminding me of Mahout. We just added Mahout very recently. What actually. is that? I'm not familiar with it. So Mahout is a data mining library. So Mahout takes some of the most popular uh, data mining algorithms for doing uh, clustering and regression and uh, statistical modeling and uh, implements them using the MapReduce model. They have, does that have machine learning in it too? Or? Yes, yes. So yeah. that's the machine yeah. learning. So yes, yeah, state, state vector machines and so on. What's so, Scoop? So Scoop, uh, <laughs> you know all of them. <laughs> so thanks for feeding me all the names. <laughs> the ones I don't forget. understand. There's so many of them, right? I can't even remember all of them. So Scoop actually um, is a very interesting project. It's short for SQL to Hadoop, uh, hence the name Scoop, right? So SQ from SQL and OOP from Hadoop. And it also means scoop as in scooping up stuff when you scoop up ice cream. Yeah. And the idea for scoop is to make it easy to move data between relational systems like Oracle, Teradata, Netiza, Vertica, and so on, and Hadoop. So you can very simply say scoop, the name of the table inside the relational system, the name of the file inside Hadoop, and the, the table will be copied over to the file. And vice versa, you can say scoop, the name of the file in Hadoop, the name awesome. of the table over there, it will move the table over there. So it's a connectivity tool between the relational world and the Hadoop world. Great, great okay. tutorial. Um, and all of these are Apache projects. They're all projects built yeah, within the Apache. This is not Apache. part of your, your unique proprietary. But yes. But these are things that you've been contributing to. We're contributing to the whole ecosystem, yes. And you understand very well. Yes. And, and contribute to your knowledge of the marketplace. And Absolutely, we collaborate with the, with the community on creating these projects. We employ uh, committers and founders for many of these projects, like Doug Cutting, the founder of Hadoop, he works mm -hmm. at Cloudera. Uh, the founder for uh, the Uzi project, he works at Cloudera, for Zookeeper, works at Cloudera. So uh, we have a number of them on stuff. So, well. so we had Arun on from Hortonworks. And, yes. And, and it was really good because I tell you, I walk away from that conversation and I got to say for the folks out there, there really isn't a war going on in Apache. There isn't. In Apache, there isn't. I mean, there isn't. We, but we'll be but honest, like in, in the, in in the developer community, we are friends, we're working yes. together, we want to achieve the There's no the war, it's yes. all kumbaya, everyone understands the rising tide floats all boats, they're all playing nice in the sandbox. Yes. It's just a competitive landscape in Horton works. In the business? The yeah, business, business side is competitive. Yes. Business, PR. Is, uh, all fair <laughs> no, PR, we're more. trying to be friendly, as friendly as we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're, they're hyping it up, but, but he, was yeah. like, he was cool, he was like, hey, you know, we know each other, yes. we all know each other, and we're just going to offer free, yes. and charge for support, and so are they, and that's yes. okay, and they got other things going on. Yes. But he brought up the question, he said they're, they're launching a management console. So, I said, clutter has got a significant lead, he kind of didn't really answer the question. So the question is, that's your core bread and butter. That's your... Yes and no, yes and no. I mean, if you look at, uh, for, uh, if you look at Cloudera Enterprise, and I mentioned this earlier yeah. in the, when we talked in the morning, it has two main things in it. Cloudera Enterprise has the management suite, but it also has the, 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 the support and maintenance that we provide to our customers and all the experience that we have it's in our part team. part of that subscription. Yes, yeah. part of the subscription. And, and I, I want to stress the point that the fact that I built a sports car doesn't mean that I'm good at running that sports car. The driver of the car usually is much better at driving the car than the guy who built the car, right? So yes, we have many people on staff that are helping build Hadoop, but we have many more people on staff that help to run Hadoop at large scale at, at financial, indus, uh, financial uh, industry, retail industry, telecom industry, media industry, uh, health industry, et cetera, et cetera. So that's very, very important for our customer, all that experience that we bring in on how to run the system effectively yeah, yeah. within these verticals. But their strategy is clear. We're going to create an open source project within Apache yes. for a management console. Yes. And we sell support too. Yes. So there'll be a free alternative to management. So we'll have to see about, I mean, we look at the product. I mean, our product. It's going to come down to product uh, differentiation. Our product has been in the market for two years. Yeah, so yeah, uh, they yeah. just started building their it's product. Alpha. It's Sorry? It's just Alpha. Their product is out in Alpha right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, the Apache so, product. It's yeah. It's yeah. Apache. Right? Yeah, so. the Apache project is out in so, Alpha. So yeah, we'll amazing. see how does it compare to ours, but I think ours is way, way ahead of anything else out there. Yeah. And well, but so people should try them for themselves. Essentially, John, when I asked Arun, why does the world need Hortonworks? You know, eventually the answer we got was, well, it's free. It needs to be more open. Hadoop needs to be more open. No, there's, I mean, there's that's going not to be really the reason why Hortonworks spun no, up. Right? No, they so want to they want to go make money. Right. I mean, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. We wasn't going to say that. Venture back. Yeah, yeah. But I kept pushing and pushing, and that's ultimately the closest we can get. Because you just Benchmark's listed not gonna... like twelve open source projects. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get much more open. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the management actually, console. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but Cloudier is not contributing on all those. I mean, I mean, not only. We are. They, no, no, not no, no. We absolutely are. No, you are contributing. Yeah. You're not. But that's not all your projects. There's other people involved. Yeah, we didn't start. We didn't start all of these projects. Yeah. 
that's you're true. contributing heavily to all of them. Yes, we are. Yeah, and that's all clear. And Todd Lipkin said that you know he contributed his first patch to Edge Base in 2008. Yes. So I mean, you yeah, go yeah. back through the ranks of your people. And Todd now is a committer on Edge Base, is a committer yeah. on Hadoop itself. So yeah, yeah, yeah. on a number so, of the. So you know, the clearly system. the lead, and, and yeah, yeah. you know, and. Uh, but there is a concern. I mean, we've, we've heard it, and I want to just ask you. No, no, be, so there's a concern that. If I build processes around a proprietary management console, yes. I'm going to end up being locked into that proprietary management CA all over again. Now this is so far from CA, yes, right. But yes. that's a concern that some people have expressed, and, and and I think one of the reasons why Hortonworks is getting so much attention. So yes. talk about that. It's a, it's a very good it's a very good observation to make. So actually, there there is two separate things here. There's the platform where all the data sits. And then there's this management console beside the platform. Now, why did we make the management console? Why did Cloudera make the management console? Because it makes our job for supporting the customers much more achievable. When a customer calls in and says, we have a problem, help us fix this problem, when they go to our management console, there is a button they click that gives us a dump of the state of the cluster. Mm -hmm. And that's what allows us to very quickly debug what's going on and within minutes tell them, you need to do this, you need to do that. Yeah. Without that, we just can't offer the support there's services. There's real value there. Yes. So, so now, uh, a year from, but, but, but you have to keep in mind that the, the underlying platform is completely open source and free. CDH is completely 100% open source, 100% free, 100% Apache. So a year from now, when it comes time to renew with us, if the customer is not happy with our management suite, is not happy with our support, the they can they can go to Hortonworks. People are afraid of They can Oracle. go to IBM. The, the, the data, you can take the data. That, yeah, and they, you don't even need to take the data. Gonna take the You're data. not going to move the data. It's yeah, the yeah, same right. system, right. the same software. Every Everything in CDH is Apache. Right. We're not putting anything in CDH which is not Apache. So a year from now, if you're not happy with our uh, service to you and the value that we're providing, you can't switch. There is no lock-in. There is no. Lock -in. And your your argument would be the switching costs. The, the only lock-in is happiness. The only lock-in is happiness. Satisfaction. Right. Customer delight. Which yes. by, by the way, we just wrote a piece about those wars, and we said the yes. risk of lock-in is low. We yes. made that statement. We got some heat for it. Yes. And this is sort of at scale, that though. The, the, what the what the people right. are saying, they're throwing the tomatoes and saying, if this is the, again in theory at scale, the customers are so comfortable with uh, that the console that they don't switch. Now, my argument yes, was... Yes, but that means they're happy with it. That means yeah. they're satisfied yeah, with right. it and happy yeah, with yeah, it. Right. Yeah. Right. So, and it's more economical for them than going and hiring people uh, full-time on staff. Yeah. So you're, so you're always staff. on check. As, as long as the customer doesn't feel like Oracle. Yeah, see, that's like, different. Oracle is very Oracle different. Oracle yeah. is like different, right? Yeah. Here, it's like Cisco routers. They get nested into the environment, provide value. That's just good competitive product strategy. Yes. If it, they're happy. Yeah. It's called open washing it with Oracle. <laughs> I mean, our number one core attribute in the company, the number one value, uh, for us is customer satisfaction, keeping our people, yeah. our customers happy with the service that we provide. So differentiate in the product, yes. keep the commanding lead, that's the, that's, the, that's what's happening, that's your goal. Yes. That's what's happening. Absolutely. Okay, it's Amar Abadallah, co-founder of Cloudera, always a pleasure to have you on theCUBE. We really appreciate all the hospitality over the year and a half, and I want to personally thank you for letting us uh, sit in your office, and uh, we'll miss you. Uh, and, we'll miss uh, you too. Though. We'll see you at the, the CUBE events, I'll swing by. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. And uh, great to see you. Congratulations on all your success. Pleasure. Thank you. And uh, thanks for the review on Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, yeah. Um, invite me again. If there's any gaming stuff, you know I love yeah. this.